Microsoft's Fall Creators update has finally hit our shores, and it's time to take a look at the new security features. Most prominently, controlled folder access. This is going to be an in-depth video talking about what it brings to the table, what you need to do as a user, and how it's going to affect the security landscape. So the first thing I need to show you, we have the latest version that is 1709 for Windows 10 Pro, and we do have all the security features turned on. Now the Windows Defender interface has also been changed again and again. In my view, the design scheme is pretty good. It looks quite appealing, but functionality-wise, it's not really the most fleshed out and efficient UI in the sense that you need to click a lot of buttons to actually do anything. Now if we go into Firesim Threat Protection Settings, as many of you already know, there is a new option called Controlled Folder Access. This is Microsoft's response to zero-day ransomware attacks which have plagued everyone over the last year. We had a lot of major security incidents which have showcased the destructive potential of ransomware let loose on a Windows system. With this feature, Microsoft is trying to address that. Now, a lot of other AV vendors have implemented something very similar before. If we talk about Bitdefender or Trend Micro, they had their own implementation of some kind of access control for specific folders. And I personally always thought that that was a feature that should be implemented at the OS level instead of by a third party application. So I actually welcome this change and Microsoft has really pleased me with this addition. So let's go ahead and take a look at our protected folders. So by default, folders like your documents, videos, pictures, music, and your desktop are protected. Now it's important to note that this is just access control and that too not system wide. It is not a fully fleshed out intrusion prevention system nor is it a behavior blocker that can actually pick up new threats. All it does is restricts access to specific folders that you tell it to in advance so that ransomware does not spread like wildfire and destroy all your data. So it's more of a damage control mechanism. So the first question is, does it work? And to test that out, we have some unknown malware that I'm just going to drag in right now. This is going to try to encrypt all our files like a traditional ransomware would. Let's see what happens when we run it. As you can see, for the time being, our files are perfectly safe. All of them are accessible. Nothing has really happened. However, if we look at a folder which was not protected, like our shared folder, as you can see, our files are destroyed. So this is a very important takeaway as a user that you should consider adding such folders to your protected folders. Now I know a lot of people keep most of their valuable data in an external hard drive that's plugged in or some kind of shared folder so that they can access it from multiple devices. If that's the case, do not forget to add that folder here if you're using this feature. Because otherwise, you may find out that all your valuable data is encrypted and all you have left is sample pictures, which is going to be very disappointing. So again, a quick reminder, if you're using this feature, be sure to add whatever folders contain your most valuable data. If it's on an external hard drive, you have to do that manually. Now, the second most interesting question to ask would be, how is this going to fare against ransomware that restarts the system, like say Cerber, Satana, Petya, things like that? Is it still going to be able to protect those folders? Unfortunately, that's a question that for the moment I cannot answer. And the reason for that seems to be that Windows Defender and its real-time protection is integrated along with the controlled folder access. If I try to turn off the real-time protection, it will also deactivate the controlled folder access. It's not going to show me that, as you will see in a moment. So um, it still says controlled folder access is turned on, but it's grayed out. And if we try to run a new ransomware, you will see that it does not work. So let me just do that demonstration for you. Let's just grab a random file. Atom Locker should be good enough. And as we run it, you will see that our files will be quickly encrypted. There you go. 
So if you turn off real-time protection, the controlled folder access feature does not work. That's something very important to keep in mind. Now this prevents me from running some older files like Petya on the system and trying to see if Microsoft is still able to prevent them from doing things. And since I don't have any really new files that do something like that, we can't really test that right now. The third question that comes to mind for most everyday users is how does this protect me against other kind of malware? And the answer is it does not. Because again, the way it's implemented, you can only restrict access to folders which are not going to be modified very often. And anything outside of that, like say program files, system 32, changes can happen there very easily. And for other malware, that's kind of the areas that they will be looking to modify. So it doesn't really do anything for any kind of malware that's not ransomware. And that takes us to the conclusion and my final thoughts. Now, I personally think controlled folder access is a necessary and important addition to Windows, especially looking at the amount of damage ransomware has done over this year. We needed something like this. Now getting on to the question that most of you will probably ask and the one which um, most people like to argue about, how does this affect the AV industry? Now what this feature does is it kind of makes the separate ransomware access control kind of third party implementations redundant because it's no longer necessary, it's implemented in the operating system. So those features kind of don't make sense anymore. But in my opinion, for most AV programs, that was never a major selling point to begin with. It may have been for a short period of time because of the you know, media attention that ransomware brought, but to be honest, I never saw it that way. As for Microsoft's AV engine implementation, it's still quite lacking. I personally am not a big fan of that, so I still recommend that you run a good third-party antivirus or anti-malware. However, if you are just relying on Windows Defender, or even if you're using a third-party AV, it might be a good idea to set those protected folders. For most users, it is definitely going to be a substantial benefit. I will try to follow up on Windows Defender as it evolves and if we see some more interesting additions or if we see some new kind of malware that tries to bypass these features, I will be covering that. Don't forget to share and like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the Peace Security channel for more interesting content. Consider checking out my Patreon. This is Leo. Thank you for watching and as always, stay informed, stay secure.